Ladies and gentlemen, being the founder of Great Afghanistan Movement, I request all my viewers to comment on my videos whatever they want. My last topic was Islam, Jihad and Pakistan. My today's topic is Religious Intolerance. Religious Intolerance is when a society, religious group, non-religious group specifically refuses to tolerate practices, persons are beliefs on religious grounds. However, for a religious establishment to persecute another religion for being wrong, ironically puts the persecuting religion in the wrong and undermining its own legitimacy. The first amendment to the United States Constitution prohibits the making of any law respecting an establishment of religion. It was adopted on 15 December 1791 as one of the ten amendments that constitute the Bill of Rights. The Establishment Clause prohibits Congress from preferring or elevating one religion over another. Religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God. The Establishment of Religion Clause of the First Amendment means at least that neither a state nor the federal government can set up a church. Neither can pass laws which aid one religion, aid all religions, or prefer one religion to another. The First Amendment Clause against establishment of religion by law was intended to erect a wall of separation between church and states. That wall must be kept high and impregnable. We could not approve the slightest breach, said United States President Thomas Jefferson. Freedom of religion means freedom to hold an opinion or belief, but not to take action in violation of social duties are subversive to good order. Freedom exercise of religion is one of the liberties someone has constitutionally. The freedom to believe is absolute, but the freedom to act is not absolute. These constitutional provisions do not necessarily guarantee that all elements of the state remain free from religious intolerance at all times and practice can vary widely from country to country. Some countries retain laws forbidding defamation of religious beliefs. Some retain laws forbidding all forms of blasphemy like Germany where in 2006 Manfred Wahn was convicted of blasphemy against Islam. The connection between intolerance and blasphemy laws is closest when the laws apply to only one religion. In Pakistan, blasphemy directed against either the tenets of the Quran or the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is punishable by either life imprisonment or death. Apostasy which is the rejection of one's old religion is also criminalized in a number of countries. For example, Afghanistan with Abdul Rahman being the first to face the death penalty for converting to Christianity. The United Nations upholds the right to free expression of religious belief in Article 18 and 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, while Article 2 forbids discrimination on the basis of religion. Article 18 also allows for the freedom to change the religion. United States government takes action against any country found to violate the religious freedom outlined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The European Convention on Human Rights, which is legally binding all European Union states, makes restricting the rights of an individual in Article No. 9 to practice or change their religion illegal, and discrimination on the basis of religion is also illegal. In its 2000 annual report on international religious freedom, the United States Department cited China, Myanmar, Iran, Iraq, and Sudan for persecuting people for their religious faith and practices. The countries receiving a score of 7, indicating those where religious freedom was least respected. Those countries were Turkmenistan, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Myanmar, and North Korea. China was given a score of 6 overall. Those countries receiving a score of 1 indicating the highest level of religious freedom. Those were Estonia, Finland, Ireland, the Netherlands, 
Norway and the United States of America. Religious discrimination is valuing or treating a person or group differently because of what they do or do not believe. Religious discrimination occurs when someone is denied the equal protection of the laws, equality of status under the law, equal treatment in the administration of justice, equality of opportunity and access to employment, education, housing, public services and facilities, and public accommodation because of their exercise of their right to religious freedom. However, cases of religious discrimination might also be the result of an interference of the religious sphere with other sphere of the public that are regulated by law. In various countries, rise in religious discrimination is a worrying phenomenon. A spike in anti-Semitic incidents and also anti-Muslim sentiments is also occurring. Christians are also being harassed by government officials or organizations, by social groups or individuals in a lot of countries. Muslims also were more likely to be harassed by government than by social groups or individuals. Jews, by contrast, experienced social harassment in many more countries than they faced government harassment. Religious wars are not caused by the fact that there is more than one religion but by the spirit of intolerance, the spread of which can only be regarded as the total eclipse of human reason. Anger and intolerance make you enemy of correct understanding. I have seen great intolerance shown in support of tolerance. We must confront persecution faced by many religious communities and the intolerance that plagues us. We must overcome anti-Semitism and the prejudice that divides us. We must defeat Islamophobia and the fears that weaken us. Once you attempt legislation upon religious grounds, you open the way for every kind of intolerance and religious persecution. Intolerance is itself a form of violence and an obstacle to the growth of a true democratic spirit. Military dictatorship is born from the power of the gun and so it undermines the concept of the rule of law and gives birth to a culture of might, a culture of weapons, violence and intolerance. The example is the permanent turmoil, war and violence in Pakistan since 1958 when for the first time but not the last martial law was proposed. No one must by any word or act bow to the shrine of intolerance or admit a right of inquiry into the religious opinions of others. To know a person's religion we need not listen to his profession of faith, but must find his ground of intolerance. Defeating racism, tribalism, intolerance, and all forms of discrimination will liberate us all from all types of calamities. You can compromise between good, better, and best. And you can compromise between bad, worse, and terrible. But you can't compromise between good and evil. That's why the compromise between tolerance and intolerance is just disastrous. The greatest problem in the world today is intolerance. Everyone is so intolerant of each other. It is thus tolerance that is the source of peace and intolerance that is the source of disorder and squabbling. The enemy is not just terrorism. It is the threat posed specifically by Islamist terrorism and others who draw on long tradition of extreme intolerance within a minority strain of Islam that does not distinguish politics from religion and distorts both. The religion of blood and war is face to face with data peace. Jihad must be declared on intolerance. If we can monster and destroy it, then undoubtedly we will be ready to fight the enemy. We must know that tolerance of intolerance is cowardice. Unlimited tolerance must lead to the disappearance of tolerance. If we extend unlimited tolerance even to those who are intolerant and if we are not prepared to defend a tolerant society against the onslaught of the intolerant, then the tolerant will be destroyed and tolerance with them. We should therefore claim in the name of tolerance the right not to tolerate the intolerant.
we should claim that any moment preaching intolerance places itself outside the law and we should consider incitement to intolerance and persecution as criminal in the same way as we should consider incitement to murder or to kidnapping or to the revival of the slave trade as criminal. Once Caliph Umar, when consulted about what had to be done with the library of Alexandria, he answered, if the books of this library contain matters opposed to the Quran, they are bad and must be burned. If they contain only the doctrine of the Quran, burn them anyway because they are superfluous. Why we feel so close and bitter and threatened by the things we don't like? To compel someone to do what we want or like begets intolerance, hatred and violence. Intolerance is a failed master of non-existent reason. It is intolerable that the world's religions founded on the values of love and compassion should provide a pretext for the expression of hatred and violence. The fact is that more people have been slaughtered in the name of religion than for any other single reason. Religious belief is a fine guide around which a person might organize his own life but an awful instrument around which to organize someone else's life. Men never do evil so completely and cheerfully as when they do it from religious conviction. As shown by the political impact of religious fundamentalism and ethno-religious movements, religious difference is a main factor of contemporary social conflict on local, national and global level. Most of the time, religion is used to keep poor from resisting or murdering the rich who exploit them. On the name of religion, the common people are kept silent in a society like Pakistan where the religion and the interests of the exploiting classes, army, military and civil bureaucracy and jihadists are intertwined. To say anything in Pakistan against the interests of these mentioned classes is considered against Islam. Good people can do good and bad people can do evil. But for good people to do evil, they take religion. When we talk of freedom, we mean the self-government of the people, by the people, for the people in all civil affairs. In a society like Pakistan, if you are in the minority, you are lame. If equal, you are fox. And if in the majority, then you are a tiger. In Pakistan, Punjabi majority has made the minorities like the lame and the Punjabis like the tigers. A lot of people have been expelled, sometimes at the point of a gun, from their homes and lands because of the religion they practice. Intolerance has been the curse of every age and state. Intolerance is itself a form of violence and an obstacle to the growth of a true democratic spirit. Though all the calamities in any society are founded on intolerance, whereas all improvements are founded on tolerance. We must be sincere, loyal, truthful, trustworthy, and sympathetic to each other on the basis of humanity. We must quit hypocrisy at any cost because hypocrisy is the true sister of evil, intolerance, and cruelty. Intolerance of ambiguity is the mark of any authoritarian personality. Among the constant ruin and rebuilding of civilization lies the coexistence of diversity and intolerance. Nothing dies so hard as intolerance. In the blood of the martyrs to intolerance are the seeds of unbelief. In case of Pakistan, it came into being on the name of religion Islam. So Islamization is the integral part of government policy. The religious intolerance in Pakistan is on its peak. The constitution and other laws and policies restricted religious freedom and in practice the government enforced these restrictions. The constitution establishes Islam as the state religion and it requires that laws be consistent with Islam. The government of Pakistan limited freedom of other religions in the interest of the glory of Islam. The government rarely investigated or prosecuted the perpetrators of increased extremist attacks on minorities and the majority promoting tolerance which deepened the climate of impurity. Despite the government's steps 
to protect religious minorities, societal intolerance and violence against minorities and Shia Muslims, promoting tolerance increased and abuses under the blasphemy laws continued. The government did not take adequate measures to prevent these incidents or undertake reform measures to prevent the abuse of the blasphemy laws. Blasphemy laws became increasingly heated. Discriminatory legislation such as the blasphemy laws and the anti ahmadis provision of law and the government's failure or delay in addressing religious hostility by societal actors fostered religious intolerance, acts of violence and intimidation against religious minorities and Shia Muslims alike. The country's blasphemy laws continued to be used as a legal weapon against religious minorities and other Muslims like Shias. The Ahmadiyya's community continued to face governmental and societal discrimination and legal bars to the practice of its religious beliefs. Members of other religious sects like Christians, Sikhs and Hindus also are facing governmental and societal discrimination. There were instances in Pakistan in which law enforcement personnel reportedly abused religious minorities in custody. Reports of societal abuses are discrimination based on religious affiliation, belief or practice continued and there were increased reports of human rights and religious freedom activists that members of minorities going into hiding due to a climate of intolerance and fear. Relations between religious communities remain tense. Societal discrimination against religious minorities is widespread and societal violence against such groups is everyday business. Non-governmental actors, including violent extremist groups and individuals, target religious congregations. Acts of violence and intimidation against religious minorities by extremists increased and exacerbated existing sectarian tension. Extremists in some parts of the country demanded that all citizens follow a strict version of Islam and threatened brutal consequences if they did not abide by it. Extremists in Pakistan also target violence against Muslims advocating for tolerance and pluralism including followers of Sufism and other moderate forms of Islam. Several attacks were directed at Sufi and Shia gatherings and religious sites resulting in numerous deaths and extensive damage. Issues involving the blasphemy law also generated extremist responses. In general, society is deeply polarized. Regarding proposal to amend the blasphemy laws, and some religious leaders used incendiary rhetoric to convince much of population that any attempt to amend the laws was an attack on the sanctity of Islam. More moderate voices argued that the law was being misused, but those arguments were drowned out by the more emotional and extremist elements and the fear of violent retaliation from those elements. The prospect of the ex-president Zardari issuing a pardon for Asia Bibi also generated a highly controversial debate. The government imposes limits on freedom of religion, particularly on the religions of the minorities. In 1974, constitutional amendment declared that Ahmadis are non-Muslims. Anti-Ahmadis laws prohibited Ahmadis from calling themselves Muslims. Freedom of speech was subject to reasonable restrictions in the interest of the glory of Islam. The consequences for contravening the country's blasphemy laws were death for defiling Islam or its prophets, life imprisonment for defiling, damaging or desecrating the Quran, and 10 years imprisonment for insulting another religious feelings. Some individuals brought charges under these laws to settle personal scores or to intimidate vulnerable Muslims, sectarian opponents and religious minorities. In cases in which a minority group claimed its religious feelings were insulted, the blasphemy laws were rarely enforced and cases were rarely brought to the legal system. Blasphemy laws continued to be used against Christians, Ahmadis and members of other religious groups including Muslims like Shia. Lower courts often did not require 
adequate evidence and blasphemy cases which lead to some accused and convicted person spending years in jail before higher courts eventually overturn their conviction or order them freed. District governments often refused to grant the minorities permission to hold events publicly. Therefore, they held their meetings in members' houses. The government can also shut down these gatherings if neighbors reported hearing the recitation of Quran verses. Government policies did not afford equal protection to members of majority and minority religious groups. The marriages of non-Muslim men remain legal upon conversion to Islam. If a non-Muslim female converted to Islam and her marriage was performed according to her previous religious belief, the marriage was considered dissolved. Children born to Hindu or Christian women who converted to Islam after marriage were considered illegitimate unless their husband also converted. The only way the marriage can be legitimated and the children made eligible for inheritance was for the husband to convert to Islam. The children of a Muslim man and a Muslim woman who both converted to another religious group were considered illegitimate and the government could take custody of the children. The government of Pakistan generally enforced existing legal and policy restrictions on religious freedom. Public pressure routinely prevented courts from protecting minority rights and forced judges to take strong action against any pursued offense to Sunni orthodoxy. Complaints by religious minorities of discriminating against them were rarely brought before the judiciary. Ahmadis were restricted from going on the Hajj because they were unable to declare themselves as Muslims. Discrimination against Hindus, Sikh and Ahmadis in admission to higher education institutions persisted. Most minority groups generally complain of discrimination in hiring. The public school curriculum included deregulatory remarks in textbooks against minority religious groups, particularly Ahmadis, Hindis and Jews, and the teaching of religious intolerance is widespread. Police reportedly tortured and mistreated those in custody on religious charges and were accused of at least one extrajudicial killing in a blasphemy case. For example, a young Christian man, Robert Fanish, who had been accused of blasphemy, died while in police custody. Judges and magistrates seeking to avoid confrontation with or violence from extremists often continued trials indefinitely. Asia Bibi was sentenced to death for blasphemy, the first such sentence of a woman in Pakistan by a district court in Nankana Sahib, Punjab. An Ahmadi family removed the body of a relative recently buried in a Muslim cemetery after local police officials indicated their objection to the burial had been registered and in the interest of peace and harmony, the family was asked to remove the body. According to Pakistan Christian Post, militants shot and killed six Christians and injured seven others in Quetta, Pakistan. The mob killed eight Christians and burned nearly 100 houses as police failed to stop the violence. Sectarian violence continued in different parts of the country. The Shia community was the victim of back-to-back -back attacks in Lahore and Quetta. Sixty persons were killed and nearly 100 injured in a suicide bomb attack and a mosque in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Pakistan. Religious intolerance in Pakistan is deep-rooted. Pakistan's minorities bear some of the brunt of this mob violence in a trend that is getting worse. However, this is the fact that the rise of religious extremism in Pakistan has created a situation where opportunistic individuals or clerics can easily incite mobs against religious minorities. Due to the perception among many that Ahmadis and Shia are blasphemers and many individual Pakistanis believe that they deserve death. The Pakistani Penal Court declares that whoever by words either spoken or written, or by visible representation, or by any imputation or insultation, directly or indirectly defies the sacred name of the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, shall be punished with death or imprisonment for life, and shall also 
be liable to fine. In short, the intolerance has made Pakistan hell for its people. But the world community is silent. They don't hear how the Pakhtuns, Baloch, Sindhis and minorities are mourning and the dead bodies of their loved ones. In Pakistan, Punjab, with the help of powerful Punjab army, military and civil establishment has made the lives of other nationalities in Pakistan just like a hell. They want to get rid of Pakistan and make it a part of history. About 210 million people are living under the siege of Punjab dominated army tyranny. But where are the human rights organizations? Why they are turning blind eye to all these calamities? We the Pakhtun, Baloj, Sindhis and minorities are not human beings in Pakistan. We don't have the right to live and enjoy peaceful life. The world community should help them to get freedom from the occupying state of Pakistan. Pakistan has also been involved to destroy the Afghan society to export religious intolerance there for its personal strategic objectives. Death for the religious intolerance and death for those countries like Pakistan and Iran which have been promoting religious intolerance. Ladies and gentlemen, we have spiritual and religious values. Every major religion has the same set of core beliefs. God, Allah, Buddha, Krishna, Tao, Jehovah, etc. are our spiritual energy. They all point to the same incredible, loving, creative and guiding energy. Let us come out of playing game with respect of our spiritual energy. Leave it on them to decide. But let us smile, love and help each other. Smile costs us nothing, but the response is the same. Love others to be loved and help others to be helped. We are all one human being, created and a part of one spiritual being. We must share the same values, integrity, unconditional love, support for our neighbors and respect to one another. We also must share peace of mind, happiness and prosperity for ourselves and loved ones and the desire to be loved by others the way that God loves us. If you want to be respected, respect others. Disagreement and agreement are two different things, but let us discuss it like brothers and sisters to come to a common point and embrace each other for peace, love and happiness. If we will respect each other's belief, it will not diminish our own at all. If you don't respect others' faith, it means that you are not well aware of your own faith because none of the faith believes in disrespect of others' faith. Find strength through the beliefs and practice of your faith and then accept and respect the beliefs and practices of others. If we have done something wrong in the past, let us forget our past for the sake of our bright future full of peace and love. Let us learn to forgive others. Let us exchange our views how to forgive and to be forgiven. How beautiful these feelings will be. Let us try at least once and then you will see the results. Let us be thankful to our differences that brought us together to discuss and sort out. Don't make your differences wider, but make it thinner near to disappearance. We all of any faith can sense and feel universal, unconditional love from it. Let us love each other like God loves us. Every religion teaches love as a constant practice. Don't just love those that believe as you do. Love those that are completely different. It's time. Let us get back to love. Let us study and learn each other's faith and beliefs. Don't be afraid to learn more and more. We may find new levels of understanding and belief by being able to understand new concepts and philosophies from others. We will find how these faiths and beliefs are the same in various spheres of life, both materially and spiritually. The fighting and bickering that we do over our differences take us further away from the religion we think we are protecting. Let us stand together to defeat intolerance. Together we stand, divided we fall against intolerance. Long live tolerance amongst us.